Hey folks, so this is my formal, I would guess, review on the new hero, Brunya. So she is our newest addition to Tempest Trial slash free unit available to all players. So the reason, main reason I'm going over this is because this unit has been getting a lot of talk from a lot of different directions. And as a result, I felt it was pertinent for me to at least give my viewpoint on this unit as a whole. So the main reason people have talked about this unit is that she is very good at being at a stable baseline because of her weapon effect. Her weapon effect makes it so she is immune to debuffs and anytime she is affected by a debuff the debuff is negated and anytime it is negated she gets plus four to all her stats why everyone is talking about her and hyping her up is because she is actually immune to debuffs in the sense that anytime she is affected by a debuff it is not going to affect her in battle and instead, she negates it, and she now has plus 4 in all stats in battle. So, this makes it so she is, she is very consistent throughout every battle. She is not going to have to suffer because she's suddenly eating a chill, because she's suddenly eating a debuff on defense or res. She is able to fight on her base stats, Plus, in addition, the plus four. These do actually stack with actual visible buffs. So it means that she is quite good at just fighting things without having to worry about chills, debuffs, panic, etc. Do bear in mind, which is, I guess, something that a lot of people seem not to quite understand, just because she negates it does not mean that she's suddenly getting the stats that she would be missing. So for example, if she's hit by a panic stat, she just because those plus six turn into minus six because of panic does not mean because she, she now negates the panic, it just means that minus six that happened is no longer happening. So she doesn't make a swing back from minus six to plus six, she is now at baseline in whatever stat she would be talking about. So for example, if she was at 55 attack, she got hit by panic, and now she went down to 43. It does not mean that she's suddenly at 55 plus the 4 from her weapon, so she'd be at 59. That is not the case. What it means is she is no longer at 43. She is at 49 plus the 4 from her weapon because she is debuffed and she's negating it. And now she is at 53 attack. It is an important distinction to make because it means that yes, she is no longer getting massively debuffed in her attack, but she is not completely immune to panic and that means you can't just plus 6 her, throw in the enemy team and expect she's going to be at plus 6 the whole time. If she does get panicked, in one way or another, she is still going to lose stats. It just won't be nearly as debilitating as another unit would be. So this is her as a base kit. Keep in mind that this is just because her weapon is currently not in unit builder, so I compromised and used the next best thing would be Shine, which has the same might, as well as giving the plus 2 res. The only difference is she would be at 2 HP lower. Bear in mind through this whole review and this whole unit showcase, she's at 2 HP higher than she normally would be. So if you minus 2 that HP, that would be actually what her stats at level 40 would look like. Okay. So, overall as a whole, she is 
pretty standard in terms of mages. She's pretty comparable to Delthea. She's very similar to Mei. The difference is Mei is much easier to merge to plus 10. And Delthea, you will gradually get copies as she appears on Grand Hero Battles in the future. While Brunya will probably not get a rerun and you will have to spend all your Grails to actually get her to plus 10. Which means it's around 2,780 Grails I believe. Which is a pretty massive investment overall to get her to her optimal stats. Now the main reason people have been hyping her has been from what I've seen is in terms of AR because AR is full of debuffs and if you're able to be immune to debuffs that's a huge 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 boom. I will go through my opinion on her in both seasons. So the first one I will go through will be light. Okay. So this is what I believe would be one of her optimal builds in terms of light. As a whole, I feel this is okay. It's not amazing because you are basically just accepting that you do not do very good at melee. At most, you will tank one melee hit and hope you okay on the counter. The build as an explanation is it's supposed to heavily counter staff units who try to hit into you and you will retaliate on the counter and OKO them. And if you don't OKO them, you should usually get the double with speed support. You can typically also stay at all overall max buffs because you'll be at 61 HP which dodges every version of Panic Banner so you have much more ability to maneuver around the map and attack whichever unit you have to without worrying too much about Panic. And because of Null Disrupt you shouldn't be Panic by most staffs. As a whole you're going to be basically immune to magic but on the physical side you'll be much more disappointing and you have to rely on either the OKO or doubling. I think it's important to also have Miracle because eventually you're going to be fighting into teams that are going to have 2-3 to three physical units and you're going to have to tank 1-2 to two physical hits. And in that case, it's important to be able to survive the big hit which will typically also be into specials attacks such as Luna, Draconic Aura, Dra Draconic Gaze, etc. You want to be able to survive these hits and for that Miracle is very important because you can get 1-2 to two hits in before you actually go into enemy phase and by that point you only have to take about 2-3 to three more hits to actually fully charge a Miracle and be ready to take a big hit. In terms of matchup, this does okay during light. You'll do fairly okay versus air because you she might have around 35 to anywhere from 39 res, but you'll be hitting hard enough that it should generally be fine. And you won't be getting debuffed because you'll be immune to it. As for unit, your matchup is much rougher. There is almost no feasible way for you to zero round KO a unit. Even if you run stuff like Fierce Stance and Attack Speed Solo, you're gonna have a very, very, very hard time, even with maximum attack support, taking out a unit because she sits around 40-ish res, if not higher even on an uninvested unit. So you basically have to accept that you won't and that makes things much much rougher for your ability to actually consistently go through maps without kills. 
Because what's going to happen is the dancer is going to be able to just Wings of Mercy in, dance that unit, and they can go start getting into your backline. Or in other cases, maybe their secondary snipe unit will be a melee Wings of Mercy, which will be able to come in and attack your Brunia. And if they have Wings of Mercy, they typically almost always have a special too. And this sort of Brunia will have a lot of trouble handling those. There's some arguments for builds with Vantage, but my issue with builds like that is then you're losing the biggest benefit of being an infantry unit, which is the ability to handle stats. And in general, you're not going to actually hit as hard as something like Blade Tome. So your vantage isn't as important as having the ability to counter staff units. So I also thought it was fairly important rather than just say what I, that this is the truth, I actually brought some calculations in order to illustrate what you'd be facing. And even on a nearly optimal Brunia, fighting into a unit, as exemplified, that's not very invested into at plus zero, is very, very hard. You might not take any significant damage from this unit, but the problem is that you're allowing plays where now follow-up units can go into and attack the Brunia or dance the unit and get into your backline. If you're not killing units, it's generally a bad thing. You survive, but you're not taking the threat out, so you're allowing follow-up plays, which will cost sometimes her life, if not your teammate's life. Even if you change close counter to attack speed solo, you're still not going to be getting the kill in most setups. You need a lot of attack support to even get close to killing a unit. So my general analysis on Light is she's very good against mage compositions, but the higher you raise up in Aether Raids, the less and less and less you'll see all mage compositions. You will see mix of setups because people do not want to deal with maps where they just die to one certain Omega tank. Moving on. We will talk about her now coming into Astra. This is where I've seen the most hype coming from her as Astra. Because with Astra, she gets a pretty respectable mixed bulk setup. This is the setup I've seen talked about here and there. The whole idea is you have a very rough matchup against their seer. If you're not killing their seer, then you're typically gonna die because your seer does enough damage that it's a threat. The biggest issue I would say is you want to get more speed. So you want to get stuff like darting stance, speed support with links, and also probably drives. The issue with that is their seer is fast enough and if you're debuffed, even though the debuff isn't going to be affecting you in battle, you are still technically debuffed for her before battle, so she gets additional speed and attack. So it makes it even harder for you to get the doubles. So this is the minimalistic kind of view on Brunya. Obviously she does get better once you start flowering her and get her to plus 10, but it's still always a rough matchup. To illustrate exactly what, how rough it is, I also did a calculation for this. As can be seen here, a plus 10 Brunya has the opportunity to, yes, kill a Thurseer, who is plus speed and plus zero. But this is taking into account, again, that she is plus 10 plus 5 Dragon Flowers, and the Thurseer 
has no sort of support in terms of speed buffs. She has no drive supports. And she is not highly merged or flowered. Once you start getting into a more supported Thrasir, this basically is impossible. But in perfect world, this is why a build like this is best because it's very important to actually get the double. Keep in mind again, if you notice, I am running attack speed solo because it's more important to get the double and kill Thrasir than to actually attack in melee. So it's a sacrifice of the ability to fight and kill the whole team in order to actually kill Thrasir. If you actually have to run close counter, the numbers are super super hard to get into. So this is another build and I feel this has different strengths. The different strength with this is you have the ability to a dodge panics a lot easier, much the same that you have the ability to dodge panics in light with the other build because you reach the threshold where you're not getting affected by panics because your HP is high enough. You can reach this threshold I believe the same as the other one which is at plus 6 and with 5 flowers. This is nice again in its own way. You get the speed, you get the HP you need but you have a very rough time against your seer. You're not feasibly able to get to the speed threshold without a ton of support to dodge the Thrasir double. So in order to showcase how rough that matchup is, here is a nearly optimal Brunya versus a plus zero only plus speed Thrasir. As long as you're getting debuffed in one stat, which is pretty easy considering you're going to be at 35, 42, and if you're getting buffed it's even easier to get hit by a Dirk Shrine. And if that's the case, you are going to get doubled, get to about 10 HP, even with the 10 extra HP you have from Naga, and then that Thurseer is going to get danced, and she will finish you off. What is not shown is at plus 10, you do in fact dodge the actual double, which is super important, but the problem with that is, again, their seer is not dying. So if she gets dance, and it is a dance for an Azura, she will likely now get to the doubles and take you out. It is very important to realize that their seer is a very terrible matchup. So using her in Astra, even though it's super tempting, you have to realize the realistic setting of what this means for this unit in terms of the Aether Rays metagame. So my overall opinion on this unit is she is very good, but she is not placed in the right metagame due to her color. She has rough matchups against Yuna, she has rough matchups against her Seer. It is a bit better actually against her Seer if you give her the right amount of support, but it does not change that against Yuna she almost will never get the kill feasibly and that leads to very awkward situations with follow-ups and against their seer she needs a ton of speed support in order to not get doubled and if she gets it to a standstill it's still bad for her because they're going to be dance and follow -up situations that said it is somewhat feasible to actually get a kill on her if you double her if you sacrifice a close counter but I'm not sure that's worth it as a whole I believe people should wait and see in terms of Brynja perhaps one day the Aether Raids defense metagame will shift from very green centric to perhaps more red centric or even blue centric depending if there are better anima and better dark mythic defense heroes released in the future. 
I will not be investing into this unit. I believe if I invest into her into stuff like close counter or no disrupt, for me, I am on the fence on this unit. I will see how other people feel about her over the coming months based on people invested into her and see if that sways my opinion. But for now, my general opinion is good unit, bad time. Alright, I hope this information was helpful to people who were on the fence. And if you like the content, feel free to subscribe. And if you ever want to catch me live, follow me on Twitch, which is on the left. Alright, hopefully see you again very soon. And if you like this stuff, please subscribe, please comment, and please, you know, please have a nice day. Bye-bye.